Good afternoon. Uh, this is October 5th, and as you can see, the environment is a little different. I'll just do a little walk around here. I'm in the backyard. It's such a beautiful day. And we have an old tree house um, on the property. So I thought I would do a drawing of that today. And uh, I apologize for the light, but this is as best as I can do at the moment. I wanted this angle and uh, I get a little shade. So I guess that's a good thing, although it's such a pleasant day, you don't really need it. Anyways, um, I've got a, an easel set up and um, a little tray here for the pens that I made a while back. I'm very confident in it because I've got my green tea here. And I thought I'd do a sketch of the treehouse today. So follow along and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so it's important um, when you're drawing from life that you have your subject matter in front of you. Um, because you're going to spend as much time uh, when you're drawing looking at the subject matter as you are uh, actually looking at the paper. And as you progress, you even get to the point where you stop looking at the paper altogether. So, anyways, so let me zoom out here for a moment. See if I can capture this. This is not exactly studio condition, so. But I'm basically, I'm just going to take the pen and um, hold it up to the, uh, actually, hold on a second. Go with shaky cam here for a moment, show you what I'm doing. So I'll take the pen, I don't know if you've ever seen an artist do this or not, but you kind of hold it up to your subject matter. I'll do it like in the pen. There we go, camera angle. I hold it up to the subject matter, and based on that, I can bring that pen down, and I can say, okay, for in this case, you know, the treehouse is about that high. And I just start to get an idea of dimension. So, for you, it's a little different, but for me, there we go. So I just hold it up, get an idea of distance, dimension. It's about that wide. So there we go. About that wide. And so forth. So I'll put you back on the tripod so you don't have to deal with shaky cam. But that's what artists are doing when they do that. They're not yeah, there's a method to the madness in that particular case anyways. But yeah, that can get you the, the rough outline. And you're looking at angles, relationships between lines and whatnot in this case. And you just slowly bring it together. I would normally do this with a pencil, but since this is a, a pen challenge, I'll just do it with the pen. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the side of the roller ball so it gets more of a sketch quality to it. And this may not show up on camera, and I'm, I apologize for that. But it was such a beautiful day, I didn't want to spend it inside. So and I'm not working on detail at this point. I'm just getting the relationship in. So I've got a fruit tree in the foreground. So I'm not going to do much detail there, even for the final product. I really want to kind of concentrate on the, uh, on the tree house itself. So. There's a certain innocence to tree houses. Opportunity for imagination. Which I think is one of the things that really attracted me to art in the beginning was the opportunity uh, just to let my imagination 
they called. When you're drawing, you really want to try and get the essence of the subject matter rather than the detail. As I was saying in the last video, um, biology of the eye is such that we'll complete the detail. So you really don't need to give that that much uh, information to the user. So it's one thing if you're doing a technical drawing, but if you're doing you know, something from nature. Actually, I'm going to leave the stairs out. I'm just going to bring that down. And our light is coming, well, you can see our light is coming from behind, but um, so it's coming from the right. So our darkest areas are going to be, tend to be on the left of, of the objects. So. so we're going to start in on the lighter tones, just filling in. This is very rough at the moment, intentionally. Give myself a little bit of leeway. On the actual tree, this uh, there's a lot of foliage up in here, but I wanted to get that uh, tree trunk to show a bit more, so. I'm just going to start to do the idea of leaves and whatnot. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to back this up a little bit. You're not going to get the detail as much, but kind of see how, uh-oh, <laughs> we have a visitor. This is the problem when you do stuff outside. Hello, Rusty. Well, come here. Come here for a ball. Yeah. Have you been rolling around in the dirt again? Yeah. Oh. I don't fuss but. So we have a visitor. This is Rusty. Say hello, Rusty. You're not going to say hello? <laughs> this is our neighbor's cat. Who's very friendly. Yeah, especially if you have food, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Say hello to everyone. Yeah. Purr for the camera. <laughs> this is Rusty. He's our latest neighbor. He's also been very helpful in the wood shop, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> and Rusty is a sweetheart. Oh. Aren't you? Yeah. You're just a wild kitty, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> so Rusty is a very sweet cat, especially if you have kibble. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to get back to work. So. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I'm... Uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding leaves to the trees. Yeah, the ones where the squirrels live. You know, the ones you were having the conversation with the other day. Yeah. Let's see, and then we were going to have, are you purring on my foot? You're purring on my foot, okay. You know, it's really a shame you're so aloof as a cat. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to get me more views. Oh, goodbye. You can go talk to... Okay. He's going to go follow my wife and chat her up for a while. See if he can get any food from her. He knows a sucker when he sees him. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> I'm laughing because Rusty is yowling in the background, doing his best pitiful yowl because he hasn't gotten enough kibble today, apparently. Uh, and I'm, I've been assured that he gets plenty of food and I don't need to give him more, so 
we're trying to refrain. So he only gets a little bit from us at a time or whenever the mood strikes us or if he's really insistent. Uh, Rusty knows a sucker when he sees one and he's found one. Anyways. I'm probably going to be outdone by the cat. Tell me all about it, Rusty. Yeah, hello again. I just hope he doesn't uh, try and jump up. He's not afraid of heights. Hello, furball. <laughs> and just because something is in the, the scenery doesn't mean you have to add it. Uh, looks like you were rolling in the mud, furball. Yeah. <laughs> I got to show you this. Hello. <laughs> it's a hard enough life for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a rough life. You've fallen in good, cat. <laughs> okay, we're going to get back to it. I should have done a drawing of a cat. Except for they move around far too much. Especially when you're trying to get a photo of them. Anyways. That's the, probably the one I'm looking for. There we go. Just kind of move up the scale slightly darker as I become more confident as to where things are going to be. The tree, uh, tree house used to have a roof, but it's pretty much abandoned at this point. It was never in the best of shape to begin with, and since we don't have children, we don't have much use for a tree house, unfortunately. I was wanting to do a quick um, drawing today, a short drawing with a short video. I don't think that's going to happen though. I swear it takes five times as long to edit these as it does to film them. So this one might be an extra long video just to save my weekend and my marriage because this is a lot of time away from family. If you want short work weeks, work for someone else so that you can go home. Uh, So there's a framework over the tree house. Where the roof used to be. There's still bits of it. Go ahead and put that in. Just a little corrugated roof segment right there. There we go. That gives it a bit more detail. Just a little modeled look right there. Where the shadows play across the boards kind of help to give it a bit more form and the trunks have a have a rough texture to them I believe these are white oaks yeah 
Hello, Rusty. So you don't care what I'm doing? I should be feeding you. Hello. Hello, Rusty. When you work out in nature, or out in public, you have to be prepared for people to come up and chat with you. Um, if you're lucky, it's a cat. <laughs> Got a little door on the other side here. Just model it in. Although that light and shadow. There we go. We'll go and see if we can pop out those leaves. Uh, you'll notice I am not trying to put in every leaf. A lot of it is just blocks of color and then little elements of detail, especially around the edges. A little bit in the middle, and then we can add the feel, the essence, the movement of the leaves. Think about the shape of the trees. Now work in batches to bring it out. I worked it darker. This is quite a bit darker. It's quite a jump in tone. Can't be afraid of the subject matter. You have to be willing to just put the pen to paper. Give it your best shot, see what happens. I think that's one of the benefits of this challenge has been um, working with ink has a feeling of permanence that you don't get with other mediums. Even with watercolor, if you make a mistake, um, you can recover. So, um, there are techniques, there are ways. You can always add water. Uh, you can pull up the pigment. It's a little harder with ink. So, I have a little bit of leeway just because this is water soluble, but still, you know, it's not paint. <laughs> It's not pencil. Every drawing or painting has its challenges. I think this one is just the angle of the light. Um, it's more head on to um, my reference point. It's behind my back, as it were. So you don't get the great uh, contrast of light and dark that you, you usually will find in, in paintings. But we make do and we improvise. And I'm just going to go in with the light color here. Just kind of use that to blend in a little bit more. Trying to bring the trunks out a bit more. They're the major element here um, where you can really get a lot of bold lines through, kind of draw the eye. See, that would be more in shadow. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, yeah, I can play with that for, yeah. Okay. I can make use of that. Get, uh, I don't want to oversaturate the paper. But yeah, that's a nice bold shadow in there, so we'll bring that out. Yeah, that gives it some good depth. We're going to go ahead and throw in some shadows. There we go. 
That's what this was missing. I knew it was missing something. There we go. I just needed some shadow. Let's pretend there's something up in there. Working across it. Okay, don't want to go crazy with it. But yeah. That's what it was missing. Okay, come back in with the ballpoint, get some good lines going. Kind of a rough texture on those trees, so I'm going to rough that up. There we go. That was looking a bit too smooth. You have boards and nails outside, you tend to get little streaks. Uh, just put that in. Just gonna kind of weather those a bit. And just get the nice little essence of details. Maybe a little branches here and there. I'm just throwing those in. I'm, I'm not actually looking very much at the tree at this point. So this is just to provide shape and contrast, visual interest to the piece. Uh, and sure, let's do saw a little squirrel up there earlier. So, let's do a little squirrel. Essence of squirrel. Probably sounds really good to Rusty, who's wandered off. Oh well. There we go. Just bringing it all together. I think we'll call that one done. So let me just uh, go ahead and put my mark on that. And I believe we have a finished picture. So go. So I think that's a good uh, place to stop for this painting today. Yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope it showed up. We'll find out when I get into the uh, uh, video portion of this. But um, yeah, it's nice to be able to get outside and enjoy the sunshine before the, the winter comes. And uh, I was glad to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please give a comment below. And uh, please share with all your friends on social media. That would help me out a great deal. Thank you. Oh, and uh, yeah, if this is your first time visiting the channel, uh, please uh, hit the little subscribe button below. That would help me out and uh, let me know that I'm doing a good job. So thank you very much for your time. Have a good one. Goodbye.